I believe you mean get, get bodied. bodied. Hey! <laughs> Welcome in, L.A. Woo! I can see nothing at all, Mike. Nothing. I warned you. <laughs> Look how beautiful they might be. <laughs> I was up there pointing, and I'm sure... What's up? Thank you. Hey, you can thank Al Borland for turning the house lights on for you. Say, th say hi to Al. I was up there pointing, and I'm sure someone in the crowd had an yes. experience of Mike... Pointed directly at yes, me. Yes, and it was. In, I hate to break it to very you. Very intimate moment. I was pointing into a black hole. <laughs> we have quite possibly the greatest show we have ever done. Look, do, do the people. Tonight. Do you know what show is happening tonight? <laughs> I guess we told them. <laughs> it's my guys. Or today. they're really good guessers. We're going to have so much fun. Are you ready for the mailbag? Yeah, yeah uh, no, you're not ready. Um, <laughs> we are... Largo is ready. <laughs> yeah. Largo is here. It's hot. We've got a uh, live mailbag on the show. We got mailbag. Or, uh, we've got my guys. Yes. We've got uh, so much news because this show is the closest to the season of any we've done. <laughs> That's true. Until Tuesday... And then Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. It's Accurate. called time. <laughs> but welcome in to the People's Fantasy Tour. Woo! 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 Oh. Hey, I want to let you know, not only is Jay Grizz in the house, yeah! but, um, but Brooks is in the house. Oh. The judge himself. He's somewhere. Who knows He's where he is? He's somewhere up there. Oh, there he is. That was, that was terrifying. The ghost that's of a, <laughs> Largo, I'm sorry, you're haunted forever. That's how it feels to have him in the producer. That was booth. terrifying. Hey, um, how about this? Uh, light up your face if you're ready for a show. You ready, Brooks? He's ready. Are you ready for a Are show out here? Yeah. Let's do it. Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah! Oh, let's go! <laughs> oh, that's new. That's new. That's oh. special. Welcome in to... You gonna feed them early, Jay? You are all my people! <laughs> Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast live in Los Angeles at the Largo. They forgot where they were for a second, but They're they like, figured it us. out. No, that's us. Uh, we have a great show for you today. I'm so excited. My goodness, full house. Full house here in LA. I got a great quick question for you guys, so prepare your minds, prepare your brains. Okay. There is one more stop on the People's Fantasy Tour. It's going to be easier for us. It's back <laughs> home. We're going to drive down the streets. Here's a quick question for the day. It's a good one. Who is a player that you or maybe the fantasy community, they don't want to forgive? You don't, you mm -hmm. don't want to forgive, but you probably need to forgive. You all have one, I know, out there. So Mike, Jason, they're all yelling them as well. Uh, Who's the player that you probably should forgive? I'm going to let Jason go because it's a man that I have... You forgive, I've already I dealt have with forgiven your him. So here, here's mine. But you should too. Yeah, I mean, you've forgiven him, Mike. You should forgive him. I should forgive him. But I'm going to be really honest. I'm going to, you know, be vulnerable here. Oh. I, I'm, I have not forgiven him. I really, truly, 100% have not. I find that, so, I, you know, we, we want to be honest with our rankings. We try to be as accurate as humanly possible. We put a lot of work, energy, effort. 
but I know there is bias in this pick because I was so scarred. Everyone remembers I built a super team oh, last yeah. year. Yeah, I remember. And that super team included one of the best running backs one of in your the captains. game, one of the captains, yeah. Devonta Freeman. Yeah, yeah. And mm. he, along with a few others, personally dive-bombed my team. We've all been there. And look, I, I recognize it from uh, the analysis side. I recognize that he's on a high-power mm. offense. I am not in the least scared of the incoming rookie or Ito Smith who stinks. This is, uh, this is maybe... You hear that, Ito? This is maybe the best... Is he here? I can't. He if he is, be. we don't know because we can't see. The Atlanta see. Falcons the offensive line is... Can't see. <laughs> Um, but, but the reality is this should be a good offense. I know that I'm not as high on Matt Ryan as you guys, but it's still a good offense. The offensive line might be the best they've had in years. And, and Devonta Freeman's not currently injured. He's actually fine right now. So everything says he should be a quality oh. fantasy option. And I look at my rankings. I think he's in my 20s. Like I'm, And I'm not drafting him. And you know what? Sometimes you just got to take a guy off your board in spite. And I've done it. Devonta Freeman, I do not forgive you. Oh. <laughs> Jason, so that, that at least I'm a, honest. That took a turn. Did you hear the question? I should forgive, but haven't. It is that's, a, the, that's the answer to the question. That is technically accurate. Mikey said he should. My goodness. But he has not. Are you gonna go? You want me sure. to go? No, no. I'll, I'll jump in here. There is, there is a uh, a tight end in the landscape, and look, that position is uh, it's been referred to as a lot of things. Yeah, it's not good. Most of them are words that we can't say on this podcast. Uh, let's just say it's... Let's go wasteland. Have you, have you, like, we've all been watching HBO's Chernobyl. That's pretty much, that sums up the tight end landscape of how it happens. Too soon, Mike. <laughs> for, tr- for a Chernobyl Too joke? Soon Too Chernobyl. soon for... Look, for, Mother Russia, I apologize. <laughs> that's the first uh, apology you've given to them. <laughs> yeah, you, you know what? I take it back. I apologize for nothing. But look... There's a, there is a tight end. <laughs> body, you're, Russia. Mike, you're famous for not apologizing. <laughs> look, there is, there is a tight end who's going out there. Look, he is, he is by no means, and he, he is not the new hotness. He is, he, he's basically. What's the opposite of that? Old busted. Yeah. But here's the deal for this player. Let me read off his finishes before last year where he got hurt. As opposed to his name. Go on. Tight end six, tight end five, tight end four. Like, uh-huh. those are great finishes. He's old. Delaney Walker, oh. he's back. For, forgive him With for getting Walker. Forgive him for getting hurt. He's going he's going to be... Look, I'm not saying that Delaney Walker is going to bring you top three numbers. But Delaney Walker is well within the realm of finishing easily as, as a tight end 12, if not better. And he's just, he is, he is safe in a landscape that is disgusting. The, you the you can boo now, the, and then we'll talk at the, the end of the season. The guy coming ACL, I just want to be clear. So you're forgiving him yes. for injuring himself. Is that what, because that's what that is, right? Well, he didn't injure himself. For being injured. Yes. Uh, Delaney Walker or Jordan Reed this year, Mike? <laughs> we all know the answer. Why you got to bring up Sophie's Choice on the podcast, bro? <laughs> Which, you know I love injured tight ends. You do. So uh, just to chime in real quick, because I, 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 I get it. I know that Delaney Walker seems like a good value. I feel the same with Greg Olson and plenty of these old guys from yesteryear. Sure. But the reality is, like, Trey Burton was the tight end seven last year. If you just look at that, you're like, oh, great. He was great. But tight, Trey Burton sucked. Nobody was happy. Nobody was happy that they drafted Trey Burton. So the, the point is here, I feel like I want to take a shot at a guy who has, like Jordan Reed, I feel like has a better shot of being a top yes. six tight end than Delaney and Walker. Yeah, I'm, I'm perfectly fine if you want to take the swing on Jordan Reed. So maybe he was the guy you should have uh, forgiven, but... Look, I think a who lot did, of fantasy Who did owners... the Titans promote to be their offensive coordinator? Delaney Walker? Oh my gosh, that's yeah, great he's... for him. <laughs> a tight end assistant. Oh. So, Can look. I choose D, none of the above on these old tight ends? 
Yeah, that's fine. Right. That's no, fine. I get it. I get it. People forget about it. It's not like Corey Davis is stealing away value in Tennessee. Or anything. All right. <laughs> the only man who can't steal candy from a baby. Yes. <laughs> this show has been so negative towards the players that, like, we're allow trying us to, to have a job. Yeah. We're trying to forgive, and so far, Devonta Freeman and Delaney Walker. I have, I look, I can make it easier on you. Okay. This, is, right. a, this is actually a good uh, one. We should probably... Hey, look, the Burns for top 10 picks, they're deep. Top three picks. Top three picks. We should forgive David Johnson. Yeah, the people agree. Like, I mean, if you're willing, I mean, maybe just throw it out there. Throw it out there. If you're willing to forgive. Do you want David me to... Johnson! I wasn't ready. <laughs> I had to plug the ear. I had to get my Aguilera on. So here's the thing. I was ready. Jeff Fisher was to Todd Gurley what Mike McCoy was to David Johnson. Very accurate. Which is... That's on the SATs. From, from, from what I can tell, that, that what he was was a Dementor. Sucking the soul from his face. Yeah. And specifically, it's pass catching. Because when David Johnson was... Everything in fantasy football, he had 120 targets, 80 receptions in 2016. Mike McCoy said, you know what? 76 targets. 50 receptions. Even though you were PFF ranked David Johnson the best pass catcher out of all running backs and wide receivers in 2016. And he said, let's, let's not and say we did. Because Mike McCoy goes for a jog and he's like, whoa, this is too fast. Yes. So, and we, Slow it down. And here's the thing. When Gurley got rid of his Jeff Fisher problem, <laughs> sure. people still doubt it. And the burns are real. You don't want to forgive. But David Johnson is set up for success. Faster pace of play in Arizona. The song needs to come back. It's yeah, been a while. It does. We'll get there. We'll get there. All right. So we've forgiven one of, of, of One of three. three. Before we get into the news, and there's a lot to cover, and before we get into my guys, I do want to give a special shout out to our tour partner, St. Jude. Yes. Can you give it up for St. Jude? They do amazing work. Everybody that bought a VIP ticket, you contributed right to St. Jude. Our entire Phoenix show going to St. Jude, the UDK. Incredible partner, doing incredible work, so we're very thankful to be with them for this season. Yes. So let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. LA is feisty. Yeah. Yeah. People love the news. <laughs> they love the news. Uh, I know one player that loves the news. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. he does. And his name is Michael, Michael, Michael Thomas. Thomas. Michael, Michael Thomas. Thomas. Michael Thomas. One hundred million dollars. Five year extension. One hundred million. million. Yes! That's I, a really current movie. Very nice. Um, but I didn't here's expect the thing. that to land. I didn't at all. I was just, most of yours. Um, you but, were saying? But, but the thing is, is the last time we had a show, he wasn't in camp. Now he's been paid. He's the, most, he's the highest paid wide receiver in football. So the news story is he's going to play and football look, for, this year. For, which I think, is a news story for some. Sir, oh, my gosh, yes. It was nice to have his holdout over for redraft, for keeper leagues. You're all in on Michael Thomas. That's great. He's got a Hall of Fame quarterback. But I think for Dynasty is why this matters more. You, you, you knew it was coming, but until it, it did, you know now that the future is secured. So let's say Drew Brees retires this year, after, after this year. Mm-hmm. He has paid so much money. Michael Thomas is going to be one of the, at that point, three highest paid wide receivers in the league that you have to get him the ball. He is the clear number one for whoever, for Teddy Two Gloves, or if they draft somebody. Uh, I think Bridgewater could get him the ball. So I've always been a little bit, you know, rewind the tape a year, and Michael Thomas to me hasn't been in that top three wide receiver in Dynasty standpoint. Because of the future of Drew Brees, but money matters in the NFL. He got paid. He's going to get his. Brees get a five-year like life extension. <laughs> a life a extension. A life extension. Can what you is get happening? that? Career extension. Can I go there? So that makes more All right, sense. We need, so he's in camp. It's a good point in Dynasty. That's a lot of money. Julio will probably break that soon. By the way. Yes. Um, Melvin Gordon's agent requested a trade. He so is not in camp. So we get to do camp. the 
fun offseason. Melvin Gordon, Ezekiel Elliott watch. Let's cover them both because Jerry Jones came out and he said he's confident they'll reach an agreement, but then he won't cave and it could last months into the season. We have been very vocal, like very worried about Melvin missing time. It makes sense strategically for him to show up halfway through the season, do the Vincent Jackson dance. Right. Um, But Zeke, we haven't been very worried about. Does any of this bluster in the news or in the public eye matter to you? Not for Zeke. This is just Jerry Jones posturing. He's he's looking through the camera to Zeke saying, "You want to wait? You want to wait a couple months? Fine, I will wait a couple months because we're not paying you right now. You will come in. You have two years left on your contract, so I'm not worried about Zeke. So I, you draft him in the same spot you have him ranked I, right here, right now, as the four. Yes, like I'm still drafting him as in the top four, the the big four of of this year. But you know, Barkley and Kamara and McCaffrey, they're they're going to go in front of of Zeke for me, just just to mitigate that top four risk because those guys are yeah, you, they're all sensational. You, you can't ignore the news, even if you realize that the odds are that he's going to be playing week one. You can't ignore it, especially when, like you said, the other three guys, like Zeke is my 101. If he was in camp and signed and you know we know for sure he's playing, I am not taking him over those other three guys at this point. And the longer it goes on, the more I'll move him down. But I, I we obviously have more concern for Melvin Gordon missing time than we do for Zeke. All right, slightly, slightly different running back tier. Theo Riddick signed a contract <laughs> with the Denver Broncos. Where's the mediocre signing of the week for that? Uh, I don't think Because for it asking. doesn't even deserve that. Yeah, it really doesn't. Look, yeah, Theo, Theo Riddick, you had your time. <laughs> Mediocre signing of the week. Just add him to the list of players we've insulted on the show. Yeah, look, this only matters if you were one of those diehard Devontae Booker truthers. Which, for, for me, like, he's been on my dynasty team forever, and all this means to me is... You can cut Booker. We're, the day is coming. You don't, <laughs> the you the don't reckoning think, is here. I'll be able to cut him soon. You don't think this eats into Philip Lindsay at all? Because I do. No. I actually... I, I do not believe as firmly in Philip Lindsay. If Philip Lindsay, you know, is that right now it looks like Royce Freeman's that first second down back. Philip Lindsay's electric, but no, theoretic. I mean, I've got some stats later. Those about two Theo guys Riddick. are going to share Here's, first and second down. That's the thing. Last year, Devontae Booker only had forty-seven yeah, targets. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Booker came in last year and annoyed people. Now Riddick gets yep. to do that. Okay. All right. Um, Josh Gordon applied for reinstatement. Well, that was reported today. That's good. That's good I'm curious that about the reaction to Josh Gordon. Look, we're all happy that Josh Gordon is still trying to play, but I will say like, this: he's he's not. If all the look, I had someone tweet at me: Josh Gordon is back, and I said Josh Gordon is trying to come back. Like, yeah. So let's he's say he's not back yet. Let's say he gets approved, and and the reinstatement is here, and he's on the field. He's a great wide receiver. What he did in year one with Tom Brady is better than what most players do in sure. year one with Tom Brady. It's, it says something but, to me that they, they held on to him through, obviously, absolutely. His, his withdrawal from and, the and team. And Brady spoke highly of him. Brady likes him. Gordon is clearly a great player. But if you think that Gordon, like, oh, there's no risk in Gordon anymore. He's back for the 17th time. Like, I'm, I, like I, I root for him. I hope everything is great and he can be there for the if, rest of his career. But... Um, Everything in history of these guys who have repeated to make the same mistake over and over and over and over and over, get suspended or have to leave for personal reasons, it keeps happening. So I do not see, let's say he is tomorrow reinstated, I do not see him as a 16-game guy. I just don't. I think it would be irresponsible of me to stat him as a full go all season, no worries, no risk. But the, the thing not to be missed is if he's reinstated, I do think it affects Julian Edelman yes. and this thought that he's going to get every single target coming from Tom Brady. I expect Gordon to be reinstated, but we'll find out. Do you pick him up now? Obviously, you have to take your yeah. shot on him in a dynasty at this well, point. Oh, pe- no, people still have him yeah. in dynasty leagues. It's redraft. Where are you going to start taking shots on him in the double digits yes. and then move that up? As I still will. Everything moves. I said, okay. I'll still take shots if it's double digits. Very important question, Jason. I need your answer. Okie dokie. How's Andrew Luck's calf? Ah, oh, why do you got to go there? Uh, it's it just needs more time, Andy. It just needs a couple more days, and then in a couple more days, we're probably gonna hear it needs a couple more days. I, I was, 
moved him down. Yeah, I mean, it, I was worried about it on the first day of training camp. The, the, the Colts training camp opened, and he was not available. It was the same calf from literally two months prior, and that is not a normal recovery schedule for a calf, even a severe calf strain. And the fact that he then got back into practice and now has had a new reaggravation, I worry, I think you have to move him down a little bit. I mean, we're still so far away from the season that everything could be fine. I sa- I've said it before, the Colts right now I have winning the Super Bowl as my super early pick. Obviously, if Luck's not there or if he's injured come preseason games, I would change. But it's worrisome. And if you're doing a draft now, you have to move him down. Do you agree with that? Yes. All right. Damian Williams. Very <laughs> insightful, Mike. I'm here for you. <laughs> Damian Williams, this is more up your alley. Uh, Yet to practice with the Chiefs. Uh, Sore hamstring. Back. Andy Reid is... He's got a back problem, too. Aggravated. He's got a talent problem, Like the talent hamstring. Problem he does too. not have a talent problem. Andy Reid said he missed quite a bit. He missed a lot of plays. It's been great for the other guys. Carlos Hyde has done a great job. Well, now Andy Reid's He's got a lot of reps. He's taking advantage of them. Yeah, but then further on in this report, it's still said they want Damian Williams to be the guy. Yeah. Here's what I'll say. I went in to see if I wanted to adjust Damian Williams in my, in my rankings. I only had him for like 190-something carries to begin with. That offense is so good that even if he has limited work, he will be more efficient than people think. But this is not good for him. He is no. not tenured. No, yeah. no, it's certainly not good. And uh, I'm the Damian Williams truther. I, I still think they were saying, oh, they've added depth. Of the, the fellers that they have conglomerated into that backfield, Damian Williams still fits the scheme the best and okay. should receive every chance to be the guy. We're still very early on in the process, but like if Melvin Gordon to the if, Chiefs. Oh, 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 oh man. Oh, my goodness. They can't afford him. I that just wanted awesome. to throw it out there just in case. If that happens, I will move Damian Williams down. <laughs> That's big of you, Mike. I, I can admit you something. You always say stay water. Yes. That's so. And I will move Melvin Gordon way up. That would be pretty incredible. Last news report today, Antonio Brown visiting a foot specialist. We haven't seen him on the field. We've seen his feet, though. Dude. I don't recommend that Instagram account yeah. before a meal. That dude if, needs to exfoliate. If yeah. you guys have not seen the it's picture not good. of Antonio Brown's feet, Congratulations, <laughs> because it is rough. I, I mean, if my feet looked like that, you I would be seeing a foot specialist immediately. <laughs> so, I mean, this is bad, but it's still early. We're going to have extra insight into the Oakland Raiders camp. He uh, was smiling in the picture showing yes. off his feet, which I would not have been in that condition. He's also had a bleached mustache, so <laughs> you don't know how much of that's gone to the brain. And look at these feet. Yeah. Oh. Check him out. <laughs> this show has been very interesting. Yeah. Uh, a reminder, that is it for the news. <laughs> Grab the Sleeper app, the most flexible platform. Oh, we'll get right back to the good stuff soon. But real quick, we want to thank today's sponsor, SeatGeek. Look, if you're looking for NFL tickets this season or any kind of tickets, you want to go to an event, you want to be there with the millions of people around the country enjoying these games, SeatGeek is the place to do it. Longtime sponsor of the fantasy footballers. They rate each deal on a scale of 1 to 10. Look, There's a reason they have over 50,000 five-star reviews. They're a great app. They have great prices. They pull in from a bunch of different sources, let you see the maps, pick your tickets, and they're very trustworthy. They guarantee so you can shop with confidence. SeatGeek will even give you $10 off your first SeatGeek purchase. All you need to do is use our promo code. Download the SeatGeek app today and use the promo code BALLERS for $10 off your first purchase. That's promo code BALLERS for $10 off your first purchase with the SeatGeek app. We also want to thank The Athletic. The Athletic is a subscription-based publisher of Smarter sports coverage for diehard fans you probably noticed a lot of people from the athletic breaking news lately their model is simple this is real journalism no ads no pop-ups no autoplay videos the coverage that goes beyond game recaps smarter analysis deeper perspectives they're doing it right over at the athletic subscribers have full access to all national and local coverage it's all courtesy of their talented team of writers we're talking 
Jay Glazer, Jake Seeley, Stuart Mandel. The list goes on. A lot of high-quality journalism going on over there. Jason Stark involved. So many. Check them out. Subscribe right now to The Athletic. Go to theathletic.com slash footballers for 40% off a yearly subscription. Comes out to just $2.99 a month when you subscribe at theathletic.com slash footballers, theathletic.com slash footballers. You guys ready for my guys? Oh, I'm so ready. Nothing you can take can tear me away from my guys. <laughs> it always startles me. It's supposed to. Because <sighs> our my guys are frequently startling. I mean, this is... It's go time. Oh, it's yeah. August. This is flag planting time. These are players that will be associated with your name, Mike, for the rest of the season until you convince people to forget about that if they struggle. So I... My guy is Saquon Barkley. <laughs> all right, all right. You're here for them. Um, I'll go first. I've talked about him previously. My guy number one is Carson Wentz. Mm. Ooh. Yeah, I, I said I one like guy. A, a hush falls over the crowd. Two guys. Uh, he's currently being drafted at quarterback eight. I have him at quarterback five in my rankings. Number, here's the first thing. I can see the future. Whoa. That's Why not, are we doing this show? Let's go to Vegas. The Eagles are going to win the Super Bowl. Okay. I just report the facts. And here's the thing. Amazingly enough, I can actually look into the past as well with incredible accuracy. Let me get to it. Oh, I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me... I see what you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can look back. Remember how good Carson Wentz was. People need to remember how good he was in 2017. Nine of 13 weeks in the top six quarterbacks. Five, two, three, three, one, eight, four, six, five, two. Consistently. That's also my password. <laughs> I probably should not have shared yeah, that information. You, it's a live show. Uh, but look, he was very consistent. And I've, I've made some arguments for Carson Wentz before, and the big arguments have been things about talent, right? He's got Jeffrey, and he's got Ertz, and Goddard, and he has Miles Sanders, and Aguilar, and Djax. And on a previous live show, I talked about the fact, I went back and looked, every single quarterback that has ever played with Deshaun Jackson in the history of his career, which has been several, has had significantly better fantasy seasons Except Jameis Winston, who is more of an enigma in and of his own right. But I wanted to bring forth a couple of other interesting facts. This one blew my mind. I was looking at the game splits. Alshon Jeffrey is healthy right now. When he's healthy, Wentz has been unbelievable. He's played 16 games without Alshon Jeffrey, 24 with. When Jeffrey is in and healthy, it's one. 0.25 more touchdowns to Carson Wentz's numbers mm. when he's in the game. That's a, a, that's a lot. That's a lot more. And the other thing I look at here is what has made great quarterbacks kind of like the next level over the last few years? We talk about it, this regression number of touchdown efficiency and throwing touchdowns and throwing touchdowns around the goal line. And you look at this team and you say, is Jordan Howard going to bang it in inside the 10 or is Doug Peterson going to let him throw the ball to Zach Ertz, Alshon Jeffrey. They added J.J. Arcega-Whiteside, whose nickname is Arcegatron. Be what? Oh, God, get out of here. terrible. I didn't name him. Who did He's gigantic. It's, it's right there. What are, what I'm telling you, you what he prefers. Wait, he likes that? That's what they call That's him. That's changing my view on him. <laughs> That's terrible. I really want my nickname to be someone else's nickname. Slightly. Like, well, that, Megatron was decent, Mike. Mike actually had this idea. He's like, I want to be, I want to be like Mike. Yeah. It was a pretty good one. Yeah, you remember that? You don't want to be comp to Jordan? No. Okay. Mm. All right. I mean, I yeah. I think they're throwing. I think they're throwing around the goal line. They have the bodies to do it. Goddard will be a goal line weapon as well. Woo. And so I think Carson Wentz is up for a Settle great down. season. <laughs> Dallas Goddard in the crowd. <laughs> I that's, was going to say, that's, that's his... That's Jason's cousin. Yeah. So I... My guy number one, Carson Wentz, because they're going to win the Super Bowl. I love it. I love it. All right, Mike. You want to go? You want me to I'll, go? I'll jump in here, and I'm going to give everyone the warning. 
We got a small sample extrapolation and narrative street incoming. <laughs> but look, one of my guys, I've, I've tried and I've tried actually to remove him from my my guys, but I, I just find myself drafting him over and over. Robbie Anderson, wide receiver from the New York Jets. And here's what, here's what I have to bring. Last year, Sam Darnold, he missed some time with a foot injury. He came back. And things went crazy for Sam Darnold. It's like he figured out, oh, this is how you play quarterback in the NFL. You throw to your number one guy. Like he, he had back he, he had back to back games. My number one guy. He had back to back games of a hundred plus passer rating because in those games, Robbie Anderson was averaging ten targets per game. He was averaging a line of six for eighty four and a full touchdown. That includes Robbie Anderson's and Sam Darnold's terrible game against New England to close out the season. Over that time, Robbie Anderson was the wide receiver seven in points per game. And if you want to be awesome and remove the New England game, guess what? He was wide receiver two. If you Which, take his bad games out, his stats go He up? improves. I mean, shockingly. <laughs> shockingly. I got to do that more. And the Jets have been smart. They put a second-round tender on him. That means that they value this player. And so Robbie signed it. He's getting $3 million to play, so they're being patient. So uh, that means that Robbie Anderson's playing for his big boy contract right now. He was an undrafted free agent. He hasn't been paid real, real money. He's playing for it right now. And he spent this offseason. He's working out with Brandon Marshall. Heinz Ward is around as a coaching intern oh, for the Jets. The narrative Street. Here it comes. I Here warned comes. you that it was coming. He did warn. I'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> He's 6'3 with 4'4 speed. In reception perception, he scores among the elite of the top deep threats in the league. This, that was really only his second year as a starter. Does that mean you believe in Sam Darnold as a breakout candidate? No. Just because you have one great fantasy option doesn't mean you okay. break out. Okay. And then, I was just curious. And then my unscientific personal anecdote, I happened to meet Robbie Anderson. That, Look, that should get a horn. No, 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 no. This man's aura oh. is... This, this man's... You remove your finger from the board? You find it, Andy. There it is. That's what you get. Did you just say this man's aura? Is Sammy Watkins in the house? Yeah. Where's the lizard man? <laughs> look, we all live, we die, we're reborn. Thank you. But look, if you would have met him, you would say this is an unshakably intense man. Our, my buddy in the backstage is nodding his head saying that this was the most intense dude you've ever met in your life. Robbie Anderson is one of my guys. <laughs> and here's what I know. I was so with you for so long. Yeah, it was, it was a really compelling Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> The man who said, I can see the future and the Eagles win the Super Bowl? That you have a problem with me meeting somebody? That's, no, that's a, that's a really nice right cross. <laughs> Look, I'm going to come in and I'm just going to land the plane <laughs> square on the runway here. And we all... We all know who I'm bringing up because, look, this is a year Are and a half. Are you starting it? This is a year and a half in the making. This is not just something I've been talking about for too long. I'm sick of talking about it, but it's been for this moment at this show. It's my guy, Cameron Yon Johnson. Did you hit the button? I couldn't even hear. Hit it again. Carry on my Oh, that was nice. All right. They so, can sing. Look, 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 look. I, 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 think, I think some people, and by some people I mean Andy, are annoyed by how much I've talked about Carry On Johnson. However, a little insight, I am a little annoyed as well. I've talked about him a lot, and sometimes it gets tiring talking about the same great statistics. <laughs> So I went elsewhere. I have a few new arguments that I want to make on Carry On Johnson. It's not about his talent. It's not about how good he was from week three to ten when he was the starter already. <laughs> not I've, about I've, any of that. I've shared all of that. I went elsewhere. I was like, well, okay, look, I am biased because I'm, you know, that's what happens when you're in love. <laughs> and so I wanted to say, okay, let's, let's, let's uh, take the rose-colored glasses off and... 
and see what I can find. Scott Barrett, a lot of people know him from uh, Twitter. Great friend of Great the show. Great friend of the show. Follow him at Scott Barrett DFB. He has a proprietary metric called actual opportunity. He believes it's the most important metric for uh, a lot of players, especially running backs. And so what he's done is he's gone back into the history of every single offensive play caller in the NFL. And he's taken a look at that metric of actual opportunity, which play callers are the best for the running back one on a team specifically, no no shocker, Andy Reid is number one. We've said for years you got to have his running back, whether it was Shady or whoever. When Kareem Hunt got the starting job, we were like, you have to draft Kareem Hunt because of Andy Reid. Uh, there's a lot of great guys on this list for running back ones, like Pat Shurmur, number three for the Giants. Obviously, we saw that last year. Uh, Greg Roman, Brian Schottenheimer, Mr. Run First. Those guys are all behind Daryl Bevel, the new offensive coordinator and play caller for the Detroit Lions, because he, unlike what Matt Patricia says they want and the GM says they want, does not usually use a running back by committee. Now, I have statted Carrion Johnson out for a running back by committee. That's why he's my number 10 running back right now and not, you know, higher number than Number one. Right. <laughs> uh, he's currently being drafted as the number 15 running back. And, I, and, and look, you can't just spout that stat and not have context. We, we don't want to just make compelling arguments. We want you guys to be informed and know. So, in reality, Daryl Bevel, he had Adrian Peterson for most of that. He had Marshawn Lynch for the other half of that. Like... These are great number one bell cow running backs. But when I was talking to you guys last year about Nor North Turner, the argument could have been made there. It's like, well, North Turner had Adrian Peterson and Emmett Smith and LaDainian Tomlinson. But that was what he was used to. And it turned out that Christian McCaffrey was a guy that was great. Carry on Johnson is great. There's a reason that Carrion Johnson was traded up for in the second round. There's a reason that he won the 2017 Offensive SEC Player of the Year. There's a reason he had 1,400 yards and 18 rushing touchdowns in the SEC. There's a reason why he looked great on the field. It's because Carrion Johnson <laughs> is great. So here's another other person's opinion, and it's not even just opinion. It's a great metric. Joe Holka. Great friend of the show. Follow him at Joe Holka. Great. What is happening? I wish I had at Jason Moore, but I don't. Follow me at Jason FFL. <laughs> um, look, he has this, he has this great uh, metric called uh, rushing expectation. He's done it for years. I saw the data behind it once, and I was like, I, I can't even understand it. It's intense. But years ago, he showed me empirical data that Todd Gurley was great even when he was with Jeff Fisher, but because of the offensive line and the usage, it, it was impeding him. But that the talent of Todd Gurley had not changed from the breakout rookie year. So what, is he, what does he see on Carrion Johnson? And here's the thing. He reached out to me, and he said, Hey, Jay, my data on Carrion Johnson is great. He's the sixth... Follow me at Joe Hoka. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> He's the sixth highest percentile on the ground for running backs. 86th percentile through the air overall. He's a great receiving back. And he's the 94th percentile in his metrics on second level yards. But it's the air yards that matter to me. It's the receiving game because we all know Theo Riddick has been cut. That is 74 Those targets. Are the man. No, no. Those are the Broncos fans like, we got yeah, him. Yeah, we got him. We, we did got it. him. Congratulations, Broncos. Look, Theo Riddick had 74 targets last year. But in the last four seasons, Theo Riddick has had 311 targets and 247 receptions. Do you know how many running backs have more than 247 receptions? Please tell us, Jason. Zero. He's literally the highest reception running back in the last four years, and now Carrion Johnson inherits that role while he's good at that role. So, look, I've made all the arguments about I just think he's a good back, and even at uh, the, the workload he had with Theo Riddick, he was a top 15 back. I believe that he is going to be in a committee. That's why I statted him in a committee. I do think his receiving yardage goes up, his, his receptions go up. I think he's a top 10 back. I've got him right now at number 10.
But should chips fall the right way, I think you have someone that can be excellent. If you look at the high stakes leagues right now, they're taking him about the running back 10. I'm all in. Everybody knew it beforehand, but I I've had gotta, no idea. I've got to play my flag. I am Carry learning on so much right now. He's my guy. He is your guy. Once again, very nice. Did I sway you at all, Andy? Uh, it was compelling and long <laughs> and long. Okay, fair. Uh, Both true. I, I, it's interesting. We'll find out. I still think it's a bad offense. I still think it, it, he's got to score touchdowns. Christian McCaffrey could do it last year. We'll see what happens. Okay. I would love nothing more for you to be Thank you. Ha- uh, if, happy, if, Jason. If Kerryon Johnson gets injured, I will die. <laughs> <laughs> like, I will be off the show. I'm you just hear gone. that, Kerryon? You're playing be for my life. <laughs> careful. All right, my guy number two, Chris Carson. Mm. Ooh. Chris Carson. And I'll, I'll be brief, more, more brief. Uh, and he's the RB24 right now. Somebody here really dislikes him. I don't know why, especially after I talk for a minute. But he is basically, he's basically the meme that you see where the guy's walking down the street with his girlfriend. Oh, and then yeah, yeah, He yeah. turns around at the other girl. He goes, and, ooh, Rashad Penny. And it's like, that's Rashad Penny over there. And, I, and what I want to say is please turn your eyes back around to your girlfriend because she had the second most rushing yards over the last four weeks was the... Number seven running back over the second half of the entire season. Had nine touchdowns on the best rushing offense in football. 1,100 plus yards. Number four in yards per, or uh, yards after contact per carry. He's a tough dude. He's just a really, really good player. And I think he's super undervalued in this year's draft because everybody wants to find the slightly more dynamic guy. But the, the Seahawks just run the ball so much. We don't have to choose people. We can choose them both if you want. Well, don't do that. That would be bad yeah, for the no, meme. No, that would be bad for the meme. We'll <laughs> depart from the meme. But now it's a party. <laughs> Whoa! Not safe for work, bro. We'll depart from the meme. But both can be great players this year. And Chris Carson, here's here's the truth. I don't think that he can be middle ground. I think you either have a guy that's going to be a top ten running back, or you have a guy that'll get hurt. I don't think where he's sure. being drafted at RB24 makes any sense at all for the player that he is on the offense that, he, that he's on. And the, the, the coach loves him. The talent's good. The opportunity's better than any backfield in football, pretty much. So we don't have a small sample size on him. He's just great. Yeah, and he's and being the, undervalued. And I don't know if people remember last season, but the first two weeks of the year, he was, for some reason, he wasn't really the, the main guy. He had seven attempts on the ground, six attempts on the ground, and then they're like, I love Chris Carson because he was on a 312-carry pace the rest of the way, which is basically leading the NFL in today's NFL. So I, I agree completely. I know I've been a big Rashad Penny believer as far as talent, but Chris Carson is the guy, and he's super undervalued. He also has the name Carson in his name, which has been important for my my guy. Just oh, I can't wait for Jimmy. <laughs> oh. oh, now Jason that took gets me in. way too long to get an old <laughs> presidential joke. <laughs> All right, like I'm your gonna, old president jokes. <laughs> I'm gonna jump in. Yeah, let's hear it, Mike. This is my running back. Much, much like Car- no. My guy, you mean my guy, Marlon Mack? No, much like Jason's love for Kerryon Johnson, my love for this player has been uh, on full display over the whole offseason. I want to talk about the running back for the Pittsburgh Steelers, James Conner. Here's the deal. This with- feels a whole lot like an intervention but tonight. Here, here's the thing. This, I love you picking this, Mike, because this is a your guy. Yes. Like Andy does not believe, but Mike has been telling the world – if I you love his draft price. In, in, in Mike's takes, you know, yeah. No, I, I lo- I'm so happy that you chose him. So here's the deal. Mike Tomlin, still there. That means Mike Tomlin loves using one running back. Last year, Connor saw 20.8 touches per game. That's the fourth highest at the running back position. He is a dual threat back. He averaged 113 yards per game, fifth most at the position. Now let's run through some... Uh, some things that make up a great running back. Big plays, 20-plus yards. He, he did it nine times. That's just behind Zeke, Mixon, and Gurley. Is he elusive? Well, he broke 24 tackles. That's just behind Alvin Kamara. His work in the passing game, 
9.9 yards after the catch. That's third. That's more than Melvin Gordon. That's more than Kareem Hunt. That's more than your boy, Tariq Cohen, the passing game specialist. Is he trusted around the goal line? 15 carries inside the five, only fewer than Todd Gurley and Saquon Barkley. He averaged over 19 points a game, only, only one and a half points fewer per game than Alvin Kamara, who is considered one of the top four. Like People will take Alvin Kamara as the first pick, and James Conner was one and a half points fewer per game behind him. The thing you can say, the, the, the only argument to me is Pittsburgh offense without Antonio Brown. That's a, that's a completely fair concern. But we have seen, we have seen Big Ben succeed without Antonio Brown. He had a year with over 4,300 yards when that was Heinz Ward and Santonio Holmes. And coming up behind Antonio Brown to fill that hole is Juju Smith-Schuster, who I believe is a true number one. Juju is number 10 in receiving yards of all time across his first two years to start his NFL career. So I believe that Juju can fill Antonio Brown's shoes, and that means that James Conner will be a stud, and is, he is an incredible value well, at the back of the first round. Just so people understand, I, I have him at 10. <laughs> Oh, yeah. J- Jason has him at 12, but He's, you have him at six because yes. you're saying the gap between him and some of these other guys is not as big as people believe. That is that is correct. Even with A.B. Lee. Yes, that, is, that is correct. His own quotes from a day ago, Connor was talking about how he wants to keep pace with what Love Bell said, <laughs> specifically in the passing game. And while I've got him at 12, it's because of worry about passing game work. If he gets the passing game work that Love Bell did, then he should be a top five back. I just love that you went with him because – you, I'm you're, all in, you're baby. telling people out there have confidence to draft this player who's really dicey. Like when I'm on the board, I'm not always confident taking James Conner. But you know who I who am? Who are you confident? You know who drafting, I am confident Jason. taking every if he take, time. I'm gonna tell you this: if he takes carry, carry on, on, carry on, carry on, 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 no, 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 no. I love this. My Marion I am very happy. <laughs> Darnell, Darnell, no. no. Uh, uh, Respect the man. Darnell Anderson is a legend. Him and Bill Brasky. Don't, Bill look up his, Brask. don't look up his stats. All right. Now, my, the, the second my guy for me, I'm very, very happy to put him on my board. It is Robert Woods, wide receiver. Wide receiver one for the St. Louis Rams. Robert Wait, Woods. Wait, the St. Louis Rams? Jason, we're in L.A. Jason. Oh. Uh, that um, makes, that's the, really on brand. That is on brand. You're welcome, L.A. I brought him, you something special. Put him in a body bag. Oh, my god. That was ridiculous. All right. You know what's funny? What's funny is when I picked Robert Woods, I did not even uh, that had nothing to do. Oh yeah. With well, no, because this is this has been on my board forever. Yeah, I didn't true. realize we were going to be in L.A. And then I come here, and, and he's Panda not in Bear LA. doesn't even get Los Angeles. So look, Robert Woods is extremely disrespectful. The great state of Missouri. <laughs> he is. <laughs> he's he's super disrespected. Robert, yeah, by you. <laughs> can't even get his team right. That's not disrespecting the man. That's disrespecting the Rams. <laughs> All right. So, look, here's why he's been disrespected the last several years. It's because he's getting the old Doug Baldwin treatment, right, where we know what Robert Woods is. He was in the league for four years. He never finished higher than wide receiver 42. That's the he's, whiny voice of the public opinion. Yeah, exactly. He, he, I don't want to draft him. He must be a journeyman. I don't want him on my fantasy. He doesn't even matter. <laughs> He plays, he, he plays up in St. Louis. E- except for here's the thing. Here's the thing with Robert Woods. Robert Woods is very good. Years ago when he was on the Bills, catching passes from Tyrod Taylor and E.J. Manuel, yeah, he didn't have great fantasy seasons. But Andy and I, when we were watching games and analyzing, we would always say, would we not? Years ago when he was not a fantasy-relevant player, He's just really good. He's a solid wide receiver. If you look in the ultimate draft kit, as you should, Matt Harmon's reception perception, he talks about how how many routes 
that Robert Woods is so above average. And here's the crazy great part about playing for Sean McVay. The routes that he's great at, go figure, are the exact routes that he runs more than average. Like his chart of routes run and his success route is identical if you put them over each other because Sean McVay goes, I'm going to use my players at what they're best at. I, I think the case has been made that he's really good by him last year. When he finished as the wide receiver 10? Yeah. So here's what happened. He was undrafted two years ago, goes to the Rams. People are like, oh, they overpaid. They clearly underpaid for Robert Woods. He finishes as the wide receiver. They just receiver. gave him a raise, by the way. Yes, they did. Just for uh, no, for he, no reason, he, which made Zeke really upset. Right. Well, it's not, <laughs> it's not for no reason. It's because they're just like, hey, they're I, like, you're really good. You deserve more money. Um, look, he, he went undrafted. He finishes as the wide receiver 32. In 2017, which is very respectable. He's on a great offense, finishes well. So where does he get drafted the next year, last year? Wide receiver 46th in the ninth round. Where does he finish? Wide receiver You seem 10. personally hurt by that. Well, I, look, I love, like, year after year after year with Frank Gore when he hit 30 years old. Every year, people didn't want him. Every year, he's like the unsexy pick. And, you're, and every you're year... You're getting up there, so it's he, probably very emotional he, for it's, you. It's super personal. <laughs> Oh, yeah. They it did is. not like that. They that. love me. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uncalled for. But he, Don't he, make jokes. He finished as the wide receiver <laughs> 10 last year for one of the best offenses in the league. So where is he going? Drafted this year, back of the fourth, near wide receiver 20. What are you doing, America <laughs> and the world? And Canada. And St. Louis. <laughs> and St. Louis. Oh, no. St. Louis is drafting him one overall. Look, he's the number one target for Sean McVay's Rams. And if you say, well, no, I, I think it's Cooper Cup or I think it's Brandon Cooks, I think, well, you're wrong because he's the number one target. In 2017, let's rewind. When he was the wide receiver 32 and it was really good uh, and you're like, oh, he's great. Well, he was the number one target. Now, if you, if you don't remember that he was the number one target, if you look it up, it'll appear that he wasn't at first glance since he had nine fewer targets than Cooper Cup, except... You probably forget that he only played 12 games that year. He, he was the wide receiver 32 in 12 games. He was on pace for 130 targets, clearly leading Cooper Cup by almost a full target a game. And then in 2018, he was the clear number one target where he had 130 targets. But, but, but. <laughs> Are you talking to yourself? But Cooper Cup was gone. He was gone. Well, here's the cool thing. In eight games, with, he had he had eight games. Do with we need Cooper to leave, Cup. Mike? We don't. It's the one man show. See you later. <laughs> Welcome to the fantasy, Jason Bars. Look, he had eight games with Cooper Cup. He was on pace for 130 <laughs> targets. He had eight games without Cooper Cup. He was on pace for 130 targets. And that's what I love about him is he's consistent. Not only did he finish as the wide receiver 10, but he has such a high rate of finishing as a wide receiver 2 or better every single week. The only people over the last two years that's finished higher than him are superstars. Here's a list of people. Hopkins, Devontae Adams, Antonio Brown, Odell Beckham, Michael Thomas, Juju, A.J. Green, Mike Evans, Tyreek Hill, and Edelman. That's it. And then, and then Robert a lot Woods. Of guys. You want him to get some respect. I do. So I am totally fine drafting him. As a wide receiver one, but here's the best part and why he's a my guy this year. You don't have to. Go ahead and draft your wide receiver one who finishes there as your wide receiver two or three or four if you start four wide receivers because you're going in the back of the fourth round. What are you doing? <laughs> so, yes, Robert Woods, that's a my guy so this year. So passionate. People have a hard time. They love you, old man. I love you. Uh, people have a hard time when there's talented receivers around him. You'd admit Cooper Cup is amazing. Oh, absolutely. Really Brandon good Cooks, player. Brandon Cooks amazing. can make a big big play. I said and on so the that's show. The, it makes it hard for people to go like all in on one guy, and so they all slip in the draft. And that's what's great. I would draft any one of those. And, and in fact, in recent drafts, real drafts and mock drafts, I have constantly been taking two of them. I was going to say, would you take both? I would take yeah. any two of the three in any one of my drafts if they're at value. All right, one my guy left for each of us. And then our live mailbag uh, warm up, warm up just a little bit. Bumblebee, <laughs> bumblebee. Sorry, no, no, you don't even have to do it. It's <laughs> That's gonna be true. There. I get the night off. Uh, is it back to me? Yep. Yes, sir. Dante Pettis. 
Yes. <laughs> and this, it, look, he's being drafted at wide receiver 30. I have him at 24 with a lot of upside. And really, when it comes down to it, this is this is the pure talent based my guy selection. We can, his, <laughs> and the question from the audience, which I shouldn't entertain, but it's an important one, is how is his aura? And it's very, very positive. It's, it's green. It's, it's uh, green. I've looked into it. And I look, you can kind of spin his numbers to make the more like number based case 17.3 per catch. He had a four week stretch while he was actually healthy, where he was in the top 24 every single week. Weeks 12 through 15 last year, but the truth is he has 27 career receptions. So you have to, you can't hang a lot on 27 receptions. But we'll go narrative street a little bit, and more so we'll go with my eyeballs, which I trust a little bit. Watch him play football. He is really, really good. And look at what the team did. Did they go out and get Antonio Brown? They could have. Did they go out and trade for Odell? They were rumored to be considering it. Did they go out? Look, they believe they have something very, very good in Dante Pettis. And when you watch him on film, I love everything that I see from him. He's an elite athlete. He's very quirky with his route running. He's got Jimmy Garoppolo coming back. He's got elite playmaking ability. He's got big play ability. And he has the chance to be the number one in what I think will be a very good offense in San Francisco. When Odell showed up in the NFL – you knew something was different with that player from day one. And it's not to say that his career is going to mirror Odell's to a T, but I think he's one of the few players. You have to identify these guys that can make a jump yes. so that you can take somebody at 6'11 and end up with a wide receiver two or a wide receiver one, and he at least flashed last year enough to give you those kind of weeks in a four-week stretch, has to stay healthy, but he added 10 pounds of weight this year. He was kind of a svelte guy. He's he got take a few hits. Jimmy Garoppolo all hot and bothered. He really, really does. I don't want to get into his maturing body like we did on previous live shows. Thank you. There are children. Yeah, um, but I'm all in on Dante Pettis. Look, what do you guys I mean, think? we you know peel back that silk curtain. Well, and, actually, uh, I I wanted Dante Pettis as my my guy, but I couldn't have because you have. It's so. funny. Uh, Brooks was looking up some stuff because I wanted him to check for me. Because you were a little bit out on Pettis for a brief little yeah, moment and like actually a... found a quote. You okay. Want... <laughs> oh, no. Dante Pettis? Stinks. <laughs> I said this weeks ago. He still stinks, and he's going to continue to stink. <laughs> I don't think that was doctored in any way. Oh, that's good. I mean, that's Dante good. Pettis? Stinks. <laughs> I mean, it sounds so natural. You're clearly out on him, but I... He I, stinks. I, come on back. <laughs> Dante Pettis stinks. <laughs> he is bad at football. Yes, I oh have always goodness. hated Dante Pettis. I'm <laughs> glad you found that that clip. Well done, Brooks. Oh, yes. Thank you, Brooks. All, All right. right. I'm going to jump in here. Drump? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. I'm going to jump in here with my third, my guy. That's where you jump in with the drums. Yes. <laughs> uh, if only. If only I could. I'm glad you like Robert Woods because mm -hmm. I like the guy who's throwing him the ball. Jared Garf. It's Jared Garf. That's Mr. Garf to you. Look, Jared Garf, he is, he is being drafted. Two Rams. Yeah, well, very look. nice. Look, I didn't. One I didn't. from Los Angeles, one from St. Louis. Yeah, very true. special. Look, I'm not the one who's controlling that he's being drafted as the 12th quarterback off the board. Last year, he oh yeah, he sucks. He was a top six QB over thirty one percent of his games. That's the Eat same it. as Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Eat it, Infinite Big Darkness, ben, and Deshaun Watson. Yeah, he really, really sucks. He was second in completions of over twenty plus yards behind only the great Patrick Mahomes. Last year, the Rams were second in total offensive yards, fifth in passing, second in scoring, fourth in yards or in yards from scrimmage, like. They are plus a, Robert Woods. Plus Robert Woods is there. They are a great offense. And here's the thing about Jared Goff. He's actually getting better. And Sean McVay trusts him to do more. He went from 3,800 yards and 28 touchdowns on 477 attempts all the way to 4,600 yards and 32 touchdowns 
in 561 attempts, and that's while losing his best red zone option for half the season in Cooper Cup. And you know I like talking about regression and positive regression. Here's an interesting nugget. Last year, there was three quarterbacks with 100 or more targets inside the red zone. And here's what happened. Patrick Mahomes, 103 targets turned into 35 touchdowns. Andrew Luck, 100 targets turned into 33 touchdowns. Jared Goff, 101 attempts only turned into 23 touchdowns. There is room for growth for Jared Goff inside the red zone. The Rams have three wide receivers being drafted inside the top 50, and people don't want the guy throwing the ball. It's absolutely ridiculous. And I, I, I sort of understand. The Super Bowl felt like Uncle Bill was at the end of the Wizard of Oz, and he, and he pulled that curtain and he realized, oh, it's only a man. But that guy was pretty awesome at his job of fooling people. Look, Jared Goff is a good quarterback who is getting better and playing for one of the best offensive coaches the NFL has ever seen. Sean McVay is like 23 years old. Not really. I'm being hyperbolic, but he's, he's young. Jared Goff is young. He's, he's younger still... than Jason. <laughs> what, what is oh, this? Man. What is this attack on Jason's age? I love it. I love it. Look. Hey, this is great. It's not about my weight. <laughs> Don't worry. That's coming. Mm, I'm no, not but, touching look, it. The 12th quarterback off the board, according to Fantasy Football Calculator, meaning he could be literally the last quarterback taken in a draft, a guy who finished as the QB7 last year with room to grow. I just don't understand. All hail? What? <laughs> yes, the king. All the hail. king Goffrey Jared himself. Gurf. So he's a my guy. I'm targeting him late in every draft. Look, All right. I love it. We, we talk every year about late round drafting. The fact that taking as great as Pat Mahomes was last year, he was a late round draft pick. Drafting early quarterbacks is going to hurt your overall roster if you're in a single quarterback league. And all three of us have a late round great option at quarterback. And I love all three. Pretty much every draft, I'm wanting to get one of our three my guys at quarterback. So my last my guy, I'm going to ask a couple questions first. Do you like Christian McCaffrey? Yeah. Is he a is he a, is he a pretty good pass catcher? Yeah. I sure. just I don't know. I don't know. So I'm just asking the people. <laughs> yes, he is. He's great, Jason. Mike and Andy, do you I feel, guys, I feel like a bit of a pawn, Mike. Andy, <laughs> Andy do you like uh, Curtis Samuel this year? I'm a big fan. Breakout chance? I like him a lot. Mike even with your love for Curtis Samuel, sure. who do you expect to have more fantasy points on the season, Curtis Samuel or DJ Moore? Currently, DJ Moore. Oh, yeah. That's another great The Kool-Aid option. man approved. Now, Andy, <laughs> Andy, I have, uh, I've heard a tale that you are a B-League championship winning quarterback. Is this true? In the Peoria Flag in the Peoria Football, Peoria League? Flag yes. Football League in yes, Arizona. This is true. We're wow. a world champion in, in that city. So with great insight to the quarterback position, yes. would you like to have Hall of Famer Greg Olson as your fourth option on the field? Uh, it would be helpful, yeah. <laughs> Do you like quarterbacks who finish in the top three on the season? Yeah, I'm a big Do fan. Do you like questions? <laughs> Do you like quarterbacks late in drafts, like uh -huh, ninth round? Uh -huh. But here's the most important question, oh, and it's right. really the only question that matters. Do you like to scoot, scoot, scoot your booty? Oh, uh, look. Who is it, though? It's Cam <laughs> Newton. It's booty scooting Cam Newton. Here's the deal. In, and I'll just give a couple little factoids here. You can decide if you want them or Do not. Do you like factoids? <laughs> In five seasons that he's had with 16 games played, he averages... The quarterback, 2.5. Like, he's better than the quarterback, 3, on average. Every single year that he plays a season in its entirety, he is one of the best three quarterbacks every single time. In 2018 last year, he hurt his shoulder, okay? He had a rookie DJ Moore, essentially a rookie Curtis Samuel. Everyone's favorite butt of the joke, Devin Funchess, was there. And injured Greg Olson and Cam Newton through the first 12 weeks was the quarterback four. He was the fourth best quarterback in fantasy at week 12. Hurt his shoulder, 
had to go. And I know a lot of people this year, because he's the ninth drafted quarterback, they're like, they're, they're worried about the surgery. They're worried about the shoulder. They just he, want somebody new. And, and, and some, they want someone new. They're like, ah, he's too good all the time. <laughs> I'm not going to get any glory if I draft Cam Newton. You know what? You're going to get a champion. Yeah. He had surgery this offseason. He had the exact same surgery cleanup procedure in March of 2017. You know, the year where he finished the quarterback two. I'm not worried. Cam Newton, he's my third quarterback late round. My guy. Grab Jared Goff, Cam Newton, or Carson Wentz as your quarterback and bypass the early round guys, stack your running backs, stack your wide receivers, get hashtag flip clan titles. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Carson Wentz, Chris Carson, Dante Pettis, Mike, your three my guys. Jared Goff, James Conner, and Robbie Anderson. Robert Woods, Cam Newton, and Carry On Yes, Johnson. yes, yes. We're going to get primed up. You guys ready for a mailbag, a live mailbag? And th those of you who are already selected for the mailbag, I assume you're all getting ready to ask those get questions primed, right get now. Get ready. Warm up your voice. We're ready to answer Los some questions. Los Angeles, are you ready for the mailbag drop? Yeah! Kool-Aid man, are you ready for the mailbag drop? Oh, yeah. Are we are ready over here? Are the people over here ready for a mailbag Let, drop? Let's get house lights. Let's get house yeah, lights can we get now. The for, yeah. There, whoa, there's people here. I... They came out, right. man. They All came right. out. All right. You, drop. you guys ready? All right. We're good. Here we go. Mailbag. <laughs> Not bad. St. Louis, you showed up. <laughs> First question. All right. Let's hear it. Speak loud into the mic. What's your name, sir? Logan. What up, Logan? Logan? What's up, buddy? Oh, is that a spitballer shirt? Yes. Oh, my oh, man. Oh, the spitballs out in force. What's up, Logan? What's up? What's your question, buddy? Since I am nine years old, what video game should I try out that came before my time and why? Oh, Dude, this is look, a great question. Look, first of all, that's a great question. He's nine. He wants to be, he wants to be a man of art, a philosopher. And dive into video games that he should play that were before his time. My friend, pick up a Super Nintendo Classic and play The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. Ooh, the greatest video game that has ever been created. This, it's, a, it's a world, Hyrule is a world of mystery and wonder. <laughs> and I wish I was there right now. Oh, it's a, this is a great question. It's a great spitballers question as well. So if y'all ain't listening to the spitballers podcast, listen up. It's us talking just about nonsense. Uh, which is just like this. <laughs> just like this. Uh, I'm going to recommend, look, I realize everyone's on Twitter getting their Madden codes or whatever, but if you want to go back and play where football really began, Tecmo Super Bowl, that's yeah. where it's at. You're going to enjoy it. Where men become men. I'll throw Super Mario World out there. Oh, yeah, that's, of course. That was, that was my game. Of course. Thank, hey, you, thank, you. Question, Logan, thank you so much. Appreciate your support, buddy. Awesome job. Next question. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's Butterface. It is the one and only Butterface. Uh, what, what we can't show you is a man in a hoodie who's wearing a mask that is a waffle, a waffle <laughs> for a face. Uh, sir, what's your name? Uh, my name is Mr. Mr. Butterface. Mr. Mr. Butterface. Mr. Butterface. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Butterface. I don't uh, like yeah. mustard on no, my waffles. No, no, no. What's your question, sir? Uh, I live in my mom's basement, but my question was, uh, <laughs> who's going to have the most top 12 weeks at their position, but not in the season as an RB1 or a wide receiver one? Ooh. Interesting. Ooh. It's like the reverse so, Amari Cooper. It, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Most top, so the most consistent, but ends up outside that range. So the Frank Gore esque type of player, sure. The Jason Witten at tight end type of player, who at the end of the season always ends up there. Yeah, I, I think you're right, Andy. Lamar Miller. Uh, oh. You couldn't even get it out. No, I tried. <laughs> Lam and you know, look, a guy, uh, I like him, and I do believe that if, if things go the right way for him, he he could easily be in the top twelve. But I think he will have. Spike weeks, he'll he'll juice you up for a, a couple weeks and then be a little eh sometimes, because he's a rookie. 
I'm going to go with David Montgomery from the Chicago Bears. Huh. Mm. He, the, David, David Mo Opportunity. <laughs> yeah. I love Michael Keaton. Okay. All right. Well, thanks. Uh, you yeah. got one? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think of uh, Derrick Henry. I feel like he's going to be one of those guys that he, he has his games. He finishes an RB1. But it's more about which games does he get game scripted out of and fall, you know, so irrelevant on the week that he might not land in the top 12. What about Keenan? What about Keenan Allen? Mm, he could. We'll, we'll possibly. see. Depends on Melvin Gordon, if he's there or not. And on Keenan Allen's current health. Sure. All right, next question. Thank you, Mr. Butterface. Don't melt. How's it going, ballers? What's, What's up, up, man? What's your name? Thank you for coming to Los Angeles. Oh, thank you. Area, so. uh, I wanted to ask... Uh, which guy are you happy to draft on your team, yet further down the road, you're looking to trade that player for a different asset? Okay. Chubb. I was say for a lot of people, it's going to be Nick Chubb. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've got Chubb ranked in my 20s because of his season-long uh, statistics. I think that when Kareem Hunt comes back, he's, gonna, he's not going to completely change Chubb and make him irrelevant, but he's going to take a couple carries away. I'm fine drafting Chubb well ahead of where I've got him ranked on a season value because to start the year, he should be great. I'm not too worried about Duke Johnson. They should be in scoring opportunities. Um, but that, you know, that's low-hanging fruit where, in all honesty, once you get six weeks in, it's not like other people don't know Kareem Hunt's coming back. And so I think it's going to be difficult to trade him. I think if you draft Chubb and can trade him, do. But more than likely, if you're drafting Chubb, you have to realize you're going to be on the hook. Do you, do you look at players that are injury prone, and let's say you get lucky enough to have them perform well at the top half of the year, do you think about trading them? Like you're, like you're just Fournette, getting away with like... If Fournette sure, comes off the first four weeks, he's just a dominant beast. Yes, But trade that's hard Fournette. to do. And when a guy comes out, you always want that one more week and one more week of... I mean, I, actually, why trade a dominant player? Actually, there is, there is one guy that came to mind earlier when I was like, man, would I trade... If four weeks in and he is the number one running back because it looks like they're using Todd Gurley the same, would I be willing to trade him out of fear that one of these weeks his knee swells and you go, I'm on the hook? And, yeah. and I think at that point, when he shows out, if he has a first couple weeks where he is the workhorse, you're going to be trading him for top-notch value, unlike Chubb, and I would do it. I've got one more, too, and I, yeah, love, I love him, but Tariq Cohen would be somebody to look at. Anybody that's in a position where they did have a very successful year and a rookie is acclimating, and maybe Cohen comes out and has more of those third-down snaps, and we think, if you believe in David opportunity that he's going to take over, then move Cohen while the value is as high as it's going to get, and you're not going to regret it. And I'm going to bring up Tevin Coleman, uh, because right now he projects to be the lead running back for the 49ers, and we know the lead back for that team will have – fantasy value and based off of last year's fantasy numbers given up to the running back position san francisco has the third easiest schedule schedule that's what you gotta the, look at in the first four weeks so tevin coleman could get off to a hot start but even though i like to rib andy for his passionate Everything. matt burita life, all things his love for matt burita i don't think matt burita is actually going to go away and so tevin coleman could be a guy who gets off to a hot start looks like you struck gold with the 30th running back off the board. So I would he's a guy I would be looking to draft and then move if he has two huge weeks. All right. Thank you, sir. Next question. Oh. Hey, what's up, ballers? I'm Ryan. Hey, Ryan. What's up? Uh, nice to meet you, Ryan. Yeah, nice to meet you guys. Uh, this is a dynasty startup this or that question. All right. Um, bo a lot's been said about both these guys. Uh, one, not so good. One, a lot of good stuff this offseason. So if you're at Startup Dynasty, who would you prefer on your team? Todd Gurley or Jason's guy, Carry On Johnson? <laughs> oh, oh, man. Why? I know his answer. Oh, man. I don't think he I don't think you answer. know my answer. Really? Because I, I don't know my answer. <laughs> I have Todd Gurley in our main you would, dynasty league. you would league. not one for one. I have Todd Gurley in my main dynasty league, and I sat this is like four days ago real life and i sat with the clicking like i clicked carry on johnson oh, to like, offer it to offer it i'm like oh, i think you would i would take carry on 
Would you? Really? Should I, I make the offer? Because really? I, I Look, couldn't at, get myself to do it. I could not get are, myself to do it. There are windows for running backs. We know it changes quickly. The risk yeah. at the knee, you could be in a really rough situation with Gurley, and there's a three year age gap. He's only 22. So it's 22 years old. to 25 years old. Like, I think I would go that Excuse direction. Excuse me, everybody. I've got, I would say I've it would got be, to go to my <laughs> Here's, here's the caveat You're making the trade off. Yeah, I will be right the, back. The one caveat would be. And this is one of the things, like, people want prescriptions to do something in every situation. And we try to have this show be more about your league and your team construction. We try to help inform your decision okay, that you so make. Okay, so hypothetical if you've got Todd Gurley oh. and Leonard Fournette. And those are your only two running backs. <laughs> Excellent. That's Excellent That's a very context. specific use case. Yeah. Just throwing that if out If you there. want risk aversion... You know, if you have a team that you, you have risk elsewhere, you probably don't want to stack it with Gurley and put yourself in a rough position. If your team is pretty stable, then maybe you take the shot that Gurley's the same guy. But a great Gurley year could be similar to a carry-on year, and you buy three years. I mean, I feel like I'm talking you into carry-on. I'm Johnson. literally <laughs> making, I, Hey, L.A., I'm making the trade offer right now. I just hope it happens before this show goes live Monday, because otherwise I'll be like, well, then I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Does that help? Yes, thank you. Right on. Thank Thanks. you, sir. Next question. Oh, final question. Final question. Hey, what's up, ballers? Tim Tappen here. What's, what's up, up, Tim? Tim Tappen. <laughs> Tim Tappen. So, obviously, you guys are high on Goff and the Rams and their wide receivers. So, yep. which one of the three wide receivers out of anyone has the highest bus, bus potential? Cooper Cup. Yeah, it's Cooper. I mean, it's, ACL? Yeah, yeah, just because. It's, it's very hard to, to recover as quickly as he has I will say he's also kind of more touchdown dependent than the other guys being the guy that's supposed to be the goal line target the bigger player the slot player yeah he still gets tons of yards and targets but like he I mean he had an inter uh, inter team scrimmage and Stefania Bell who is an injury expert she talked about how great Cooper Cup is looking so it's Brandon Cooks is banged up right now yeah so I I would say it's, it's still Cooper Cup because it's the low injury Hanging fruit. All right, one more thing, by the way. This live tour also Tim. brought to you by Tim. Pristine Auction. <laughs> you brought see, to you by Tim. You see a uh, Jared oh! Gerf Jared helmet. Gerf. The crowd and is so Tim upset. And Tim Tappen, who's wearing full San Francisco gear, is the winner of the Jared Garf helmet. So give him a round of applause. But what we should we should also include, he's wearing a San Francisco jersey, but that's a Nick Mullins jersey. <laughs> <laughs> that's a quarterback streamer, right? Yeah, he's there. got good taste. That is Nick Mullins' brother in the house. <laughs> um, that's gonna wrap it up for us. We want to say thank you again to St. Jude for to Pristine Auction, and most of all to the Foot Clan who came out and supported the show. We're going to hang out as long as we can with you. And thank you so much for coming out and supporting the footballers. This season is going to be amazing. Let's get some titles, people. And if you're listening to the podcast at home, we'll see you tomorrow on Tuesday. Ladies and gentlemen in this crowd, you are beautiful. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Listening to another edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Don't forget to visit us on the web at www.thefantasyfootballers.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Remember, subscribe to The Athletic today and enjoy coverage that goes beyond game recaps to provide smarter analysis and a deeper perspective about teams. The model is simple no ads, no pop ups, no autoplay videos. Get full access to all national and local college football coverage plus stories, podcasts, videos from all sports. Go to theathletic.com slash footballers for 40% off a yearly subscription that comes out to $2.99 a month when you subscribe at theathletic.com slash footballers.